So we're going to have the top 10 sniper support builds. If you enjoy the content, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're brand new, want to find your way back, double check, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Let's go ahead and get into the first one, which you can see a little bit of the gameplay in the background. Nothing crazy. I think it's actually a tie between the MP7 and the LC10. Um, these things both have really good TTKs up to about 15, 20 meters, and their drop off, it stays consistent after that with relatively decent TTKs. Really the only downfall with these weapons is their ammo capacity. Normally being in the rifle category, you get more ammo. Same thing with LMGs. Sniper rifles, they have even less. It's just kind of one of those things that that kind of holds them back. Um, and they just don't deal a lot of damage, but they have decent fire rates. So it's kind of one of those things um, that there are other options that are a little bit better. But if you want to mix it up, have a little bit better mobility, I think the LC10 and the MP7 are great places to start. FYI, this video does have a sponsored segment. Raid Shadow Legends has decided to sponsor another video. And if you're unfamiliar with Raid, they're basically the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone. They've set the bar high and there's no going back. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 500 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. Pretty easy to get started. Just use my links below to download Raid yourself to your mobile phone or even on PC. Many of you guys know that I have played Raid Shadow Legends for a while now, and these are some of the champions I've been using. One champion's Astralon. This guy is perfect for arena, especially when you put him with Countess Licks pretty much over before it begins. His default attack goes from two hits to three, and it allows you to take out one of your opponents rather quickly. And if you plan to go up against a boss, Roxum is a good way to go because he comes with a ton of debuffs, which will help out the rest of the team. Things like stun, sleep, decrease defense, and weaken. One of the best parts about Raid is they're always adding new content. They just added 11 amazing new champions, over 200 brand new missions to complete with an exclusive legendary champion as your reward if you manage to finish all of them. And if that's not enough, they've also added five tough new levels to almost every dungeon. And that's just in one month. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on my links and support my channel by downloading Raid today. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. So for the MP7, pretty straightforward. Mono, Recon, those actually do stack. You do get more range despite the myth that is out there. This has been tested thoroughly that you actually get a little bit more range even when stacking those um, beyond the damage range, it still works. Tack laser does its thing, helps with stability. Some people like no stock for better hip fire, preference, commando foregrip, and 60 round mag. Then when it comes to the LC10, you're probably gonna run the agency suppressor because you do care about a little bit more bullet velocity, even though it's gonna hurt your range slightly. Then you come in with the ranger for maximum bullet velocity. You have the field agent grip for a little bit more recoil since the engagements are gonna be further than those 15-ish meters, and then the 55 round mag. And then this is where you can kind of do whatever you want. If you want a little bit more snappy aim, you go with the Serpent Wrap or the Airborne Elastic. Airborne Elastic is my preference because it gives you a little bit faster aim down sight. It does hurt your sprint to fire just a little bit more, uh, but since you're using this a little bit further ranges, you're probably gonna be aimed down sight. You're not gonna be hip firing um, and coming into engagement a little bit further away. So again, preference, some people will go with an optic because you will be challenging people a little bit further. And I'm gonna be offering alternative choices to pick based off your preferences because everyone's a little different. Some people like iron sight, some people have independent affected FOVs. It, it all depends. Some people have FOV sliders, some people don't. So we gotta go ahead and mix and match based off what works for other players. This is nine and 10 kind of tied for ninth. Let's go ahead and get to number eight. So number eight on the list is the Groza and there's nothing really wrong with the Groza. I just think that there's better options. I think the TTK is really solid on this. You can stack it with the right bullet velocity. When they nerfed it to kind of adjust for that other barrel, it kind of threw this one out of whack. It went from really being a good close range option. As an SMG, it's really good. The mobility's still nice. ADS is really good. But the biggest thing with the Groza is just, I think the other ones do it better. It's not so blocky. Um, some other guns are a bit less blocky on the on the sides of the actual iron sights this gun had an issue where it didn't have iron sights for a while depending on what barrel you use so that's kind of how that particular one works i think it's a good option for sniper support so again there's going to be a little bit of mix and matching here uh the suppressor we're using the brand new one because it still gives you the bullet velocity it does hurt the range a little bit but we're going to make up for that with the reinforce because that's helping the range and bullet velocity so you're still getting decent bullet velocity but you're not taking the hit on the aim down sight spetsnet speed grip a little bit weird named, but this one is the field agent grip equivalent um, compared to like the other one, which is not. Um, and then we have the 60 round mag, the normal drum mags on these, you don't want to slow down the ADS anymore. Um, even though the faster reload will be slightly faster, the reload on this thing is pretty solid. And then I prefer an optic 
But if you're not going to go with the optic, you would go with the elastic or the serpent, depending on preference on ADS or sprint to fire. And that's kind of how that one builds out. So in the number seven spot is actually gonna be the AK-47 Cold War version. I think this is top tier in terms as an SMG, but using a sniper support, I think more than more often than not, people will struggle with a little bit more of the recoil at range. Um, so you kind of want to build it a little bit towards that. And I think that's what kind of dropped it down. I think if it had slightly less recoil, even though it was buffed, I think it would, it would slip a little bit higher. It'd be a little bit easier to use, but I think it takes a little bit more skill to use. So that makes it a little bit harder for most of the people to use. So it kind of ends up with that issue. TTK is amazing. Recoil is a little bit tough, um, but overall it's a pretty solid weapon. Slow fire rate, again, a little bit more unforgiving, but here's the class setup. So again, this one has a few different options. If you go with the Groove Suppressor, you can go with the Liberator, or you can even go with the Ultralight for a little bit faster strafe speed. Like I said, um, the strafe speed you get with this one and the bullet velocity and range, it's not worth the recoil because then you're gonna end up missing shots at range that you need to hit shots at as a sniper support, right? So it's all preference, uh, but you would use the Liberator with the Gru because this one's not hurting your range, but if you go with the Suppressor, maybe you would go with the, the Reinforced so that you get better ADS, but you're making up for that. So this is kind of a common thing we're gonna see with these. You have options. That's why the Cold War attachments are actually better spot or in a better spot than the Modern Warfare ones because most of the Modern Warfare ones, it's like, use this and that's it. This one is like, well, you can use this and if you decide to use this, then you use this other one. Makes it a little bit more confusing, but you get more build diversity where you can use this at range, sniper support, and as an SMG just by swapping out attachments. We got the Spesnats grip. 45 round mag, I would say dolo, solos and duos, you can get away with it. Um, but more than likely, I would probably go with 60 mag. It will make it a little bit slower. You just gotta be a little more comfortable when people are at close ranges. And then you either put a faster aim down sight. I feel like at 40, 50 meters, it gets a little bit harder to hit. So I would use a, an LED, a micro flex LED, a micro meal stop reflex, or you could even use the hollow scout, just a little bit harder. And those close word engagements, you gotta be a little more careful. Next up is going to be the AMAX. And I think the AMAX is probably more ideal for the range weapon. I still think it's the number one range weapon to use outside of using a sniper or something like that. It's just really easy to use, high damage. Even after the nerf, it's still pretty solid. I think it's the most used competitive weapon if people are playing with money on the line, long range. Sniper support, you see it a little bit less used often because it is a little bit slower. You do run into some issues um, in, in hitting your shots because of the slower fire rate similar to that we saw with the AK-47, and that's why I've knocked it down a little bit, but it's still up here on the list at the number six ranked gun. Uh, and the class setup we're gonna be using for that. The class setup is very similar to what we see with the meta long range build, but instead of an optic, we're using the TAC laser. This will help us more medium long ranges if you absolutely have to and have an optic. I would probably get rid of the commando or the TAC laser and then put on the holographic sight. So you'd have that more short to medium range. Uh, but again, you have to understand the, the strengths and weaknesses of the weapons and how to use it. That is one of the biggest problems with it is it doesn't have a lot of diversity in the barrels. Uh, these help your aim down sight, but destroy your bullet velocity, which you need bullet velocity. And then you could go with maybe a tactical suppressor um, because it's not gonna hurt your aim down sight quite as much as the others. But then he's like, well, you don't have everything you need there. You do have some options, but overall, I think that's what knocks it down. The iron sights aren't perfectly clean like a growl, but still very usable if you get used to them. And that is the key. You got to get used to them. Next up is actually still a lot of fun. And I think benefited significantly from the change to the suppressor. And that is the FFAR. It is built in with a very fast fire rate. It's been nerfed multiple times, but it is so forgiving because of that fire rate. It's a little bit slower because it's in the rifle category and feels like it's in the rifle category. But in the sniper support category, most of the weapons are going to be in the rifle category. So you're competing purely on easy use TTK. And I still think it is very powerful, very easy to use, and it can still be SMG build as well if you want to build it that way um, and i think it's even better as an smg than sniper support but that's a whole different story we're focusing on sniper support and the class setup we're going to be using for the ffar is so the the basic class setup i would use is the regular suppressor now the reinforced heavy because of the things we talked about but like i said you could swap out put on the regular Gru suppressor agency suppressor and then put on like the ranger or the takedown really just depends on what your preferences are uh, but overall, this is a good combo because it's solving for those issues. If you wanted only for range, I would swap it out certain attachments. If I wanted it close, I would swap out a certain attachments. And then I would have 50 round mag and then either Raider stock and optic or the serpent wrap or the airborne elastic. Those really come down to preference. You would swap out among those three, depending on how you handle the weapon. I feel like for me, I would probably go with an optic more than anything. Even the iron sights are clean. 
It's just a little easier to track targets at range. Um, and at range, I mean like 40, 50 meters, not like 20 meters. That's super easy, right? So it's a matter of preference. There's kind of how it goes. You got to start to that loadout. So even though the XM4 is going to be taking the fourth place slot, I actually have it tied in my rankings essentially with the FFAR and the AMAX. I think they're equally kind of together there. And then there's a kind of a gap and our top three will also be kind of tied as you'll see. But I wanted to point that out just because some people were like, oh, the other one's way better. It's, it's preference. And I think they're very close to tied. I think that's the good thing about our current meta is so many things are competing head to head for those top spots. And there's not really a lot of weapons at the top spots. So you got really good build diversity. XM4 is a lot of fun. Um, I think it, it's, uh, it's one of those ones that I still prefer the M4A one. Um, even though it has less strafe speed with the big strafe nerf that they did to a lot of the rifles and Cold War attachments, they brought them a little bit more in line. And in the damage, I just feel better using the M4. So the XM4 is great. Uh, I think, like I said, it's about even with the FFAR. Some people don't like the, the visual shake of the, the optics. There's different, uh, you know, blueprints for that. I don't buy blueprints, but they are there and they do exist. So let's go ahead and talk about the loadout. So similar scenario, it is a Cold War weapon. So some of these things will be based off preference. I'm using the new modified suppressor with the takedown barrel. So it's being offset for that damage reduction. So we still get amazing damage. Uh, we, we're not penalized for the ADS speed since we're going to be using this up close as well as medium range. And we got the field agent grip. 60 round mag and then you could either go with the airborne elastic if you don't have a problem with the iron sights i know some most people don't but some people do it's hard for them to track targets go with the microflex led or you could put on the tiger team for a little bit more mobility obviously the smg builds have the tiger mobility no under barrel they're, they're built completely different so i understand that if you don't understand that it makes it a little tricky to explain what a sniper support build is but yes they, they it, there are good options um you can go with the raider pad too it just depends on preference um at that point, you got a couple of the main builds of what's going to make a good sniper support build. So let's get into the top three. So top three is a little bit tricky. I, I think a lot of these can go up or down. I think uh, especially with the meta changes and the way things have changed a little bit. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is the Farah. The Farah is actually really good. Low recoil, clean iron sight in the middle. It does kind of have the little bit of bulkiness on the side. Not quite as weird as the Groza for me, but it's a pretty nice one. Doesn't have a lot of recoil. DPS is actually really good, even at further ranges. Um, it has the same damage profile as the LC-10, but the drop-off is way further. The rate of fire is the same damage, all that. It, the recoil is good. Um, it has 60 round mag. The strafe speed's good because it's Cold War gun. I mean, overall, like, it's really, really good. Only downside is a little bit slower on the aim down sight, and some people might want an optic. So because of that, it, it's just a matter of preference again. Let's go ahead and talk about the class setup. So pretty similar build. Suppressor with the takedown. Like I said, you can swap out the agency Gru and then uh, use the other barrel, like either the Liberator or the Contour or whatever. I mean, you were kind of limited, but the Liberator would be good for bullet velocity if you wanted bullet velocity, if you don't care about the range. That's another good option instead of the takedown. Um, if you want strafe speed, you can go with the Ultralight and then put on the Gru Suppressor so you get a little bit more bullet velocity and your range maintains. So it's again, trade-offs. And then the Spetsnaz Grip, which is for the vertical horizontal, very similar to Agency, but it's in a different spot. And then we got 60 round mag, Serpent Wrap, or uh, the Gru Elastic. But again, preference on Sprint to Fire, Aim Down Sight Speed. Let's go ahead and get to the top two. Like I said, these top three are tied, so these ones are all pretty even together. Next one up on my list is gonna be the M4. This has a lot to do with preference. I think this one could slide down just a notch because it's TTK isn't amazing up close. Neither of uh, most of these rifles, they're pretty good. Uh, but right at that 20-ish meter mark, they're better than all the SMGs just because the SMGs don't have that range. Um, they have the mobility versatility in that regard, like up close, but a lot of these rifles stand in. I think if you still go with the no stock build, you get the really good mobility. You could go with this attack laser if you want it more for range. But like I said, this is more for a sniper support build. And we're basically going back to the original Warzone Season 1. Use a no stock M4 built out with an HDR, Car 98, whatever sniper rifle you want. And I think the meta is really at that point where it's versatile enough. It's got to be very careful on close range engagements with any of these rifles that are sniper support because they do not dominate within 10 meters. That's kind of like the part of the sniper support where they're not going to dominate at that because you would just get an SMG for that zero to 10 meters or a shotgun. Like that's just kind of how it goes. So keeping that in mind, the, the let's go ahead and get into the build. So the M4 is pretty straightforward build. Monolithic suppressor, Corvus Marksman, 
Commando foregrip, 60 round mag, and no stock. This was the number one pro build way back when. They did nerf no stock, but it's still very good for how you're going to use a sniper support and how it compares with the other weapons. Definitely recommend trying it out if it's been a while. Um, if you don't like the no stock, you can always swap it to tack laser. You will lose a little bit of mobility since this is your main get around gun because you're going to have a sniper. Uh, I like the no stock over it for that reason, but again, preference. This number one and one is going to be the Ram, and this one's one that we kind of talked about for a while. It never really had its niche. I know some people are experimenting with it as a range weapon. Requires way more skill to use at range, so you're not seeing as many people do that. Uh, but it is a very good option once you get used to the the backwards recoil. And what I mean by that is almost every gun goes up, up into the right, up into the right, right into the up, or whatever you want to call it. This thing goes up and to the left. The only other gun that does that is kind of like the Kilo, I think, but the Kilo has way less magnitude where it barely even moves. This thing goes up and to the left, complete opposite of the M4, and I think that's where some people struggle with it at range, but I think it's the best sniper support option, um, and it has been for quite a while because TTK is really good. The only big problem is its damage per mag isn't the best because it has a 50 round mag, Rate of fire is amazing, so it's forgiving. One of the best bullet velocities in the game at over 1300, so it feels very much like hit scan. Uh, let's go ahead and get into some of the attachments. So for this one, there's gonna be a, a couple trade-offs depending on your play style and preference. We got monolithic suppressor, ranger barrel, tack laser, commando foregrip, and 50 round mag. Um, if you were using this as an SMG, you could probably get away with no barrel, and then maybe you put on a uh, stippled grip or something like that. But since this is, needs to have a little bit of bullet velocity, you either go with the Ranger or the Eclipse. The biggest difference here is it's going to be a little bit slower to go with the Ranger uh, and you get lower movement speed there. But it's helping with the recoil control. So this really comes down to player skill. If you start using the Eclipse and you feel like you're losing gunfights because you're missing shots, you probably need to go to the Ranger. If you're using the Ranger and it feels a little too easy, try the Eclipse. And it's going to feel a little bit faster with the Eclipse. Um... And that's going to be better for when you get into those closer range engagements. So it's kind of one of those trade-offs. The other part that people will struggle with is having a tack laser and they don't like the iron sights. You got to kind of get rid of the tack laser if you want to go that route. And then you're going to put on the hollow sight or something like that or a reflex or something for close range. And then maybe for sure I would go with the FSS or the Eclipse so you get the faster aim down sight since you're not going to have a tack laser. Again, it comes down to preference and skill level. That is one of the most important components to building a loadout. Some loadouts are universal. Some are based on skill. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Learned something new. If you did, please do me a favor. Hit the like button. If you're brand new. Want to find your way back? Double check. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.